All right, hello, welcome back everybody to episode 79 of the podcast now. For anybody who's new, this is a podcast, so the only thing on the screen is going to be a shifting visual backdrop. My throat's a little bit sore, so I apologize if my voice is a little bit off. And as always, if anybody wants to support me in the channel of the podcast, or just help me continue being able to exist in real life, then PayPal and Patreon links are both down in the description below and at the top in comment. So, here comes the cold by lower 48 temperate climate standards, not by my warped, skewed Alaskan cold standards, but by the temperature standards of temperate climate zones, where most listeners are probably from. In the U.S., over the course of the week that has just gone on, at least over most of the uh, lower 48 continental U.S., a pretty decent cold front dipped down from the north and brought uh, much colder than normal temperatures, at least for the particular time of year something that had previously happened a week or two ago and is about to happen this coming week again with the initial outlooks uh, for the moment being the southern states uh, dipping down to the 40s on a few days and or otherwise dipping down into the 50s at night, the northeastern states dipping down into the 40s for a huge portion of the week, the northwestern states dipping down uh, towards freezing, the Great Lake states not going uh, as far down as they had under these two cold fronts, but still going down into the 30s and uh, warming back up into the 40s on a few days. The Midwestern and Mountain states, however, going all the way down below 20 degrees Fahrenheit into the 10s in the upcoming week. Well, it obviously bears heavy relevance to heating demand in the U.S. Now, a huge portion of U.S. heating was already natural gas heating, and uh, an increasing portion is becoming natural gas heating as older heating systems like oil boilers, propane heaters, and even some places that were still using wood stoves and the like are being switched over to natural gas heaters because it's far more efficient and also doesn't fill the air with smog and soot. So U.S. heating demand for natural gas is going to continue growing each uh, prospective winter. Granted, the heating amount each winter obviously varies with the winter itself, However, the outlook so far is uh, obviously hinting at this upcoming winter being a pretty heavy one. Granted, we still obviously won't know until we go through the winter itself. U.S. heating demand is, however, because of uh, the temperatures that have been getting experienced so far, jumping up already ahead of time compared to when it would normally do so, as heating demand for this week that is just ending averaged 16.4 billion cubic feet per day of natural gas for heating demand. Now that raises what was previously, for the last uh, few years, a near future issue, however, what is now a now issue, and that was uh, the inevitable disparities or supply-demand gaps that were going to eventually appear and grow over time. As we all knew, U.S. natural gas production was inevitably going to hit its second and likely final peak, and then start its uh, terminal decline down from that. Well, the U.S. has reached its second and most likely final natural gas peak, and that was back around uh, December of last year or January of this year at about 109 billion cubic feet per day. And it initially started out on a, uh, a regular terminal decline slope, down to 108, 107, heading towards 106. But then it got rapidly accelerated by the whole 2020 situation that happened that... Uh, inevitably resulted in uh, price collapses for both oil and natural gas, which stalled all drilling operations, especially in shale, and collapsed the drilling rig count. For the U.S. in particular, the number of actively drilling rigs dropped from 800 down to around 250, and only now, with oil hovering around $40 and natural gas a bit under $3, it is just starting to recover back up into the 280s over the course of the last month. But U.S. natural gas production... Instead of falling by, I don't know, maybe 5, 6, maybe over the course of the year, it had already fallen by nearly 12 billion cubic feet per day as of last week's update. This week it has had a sudden bounce back that will likely not linger. Last week it had dropped down to 97.2 billion cubic feet per day. This week it did bounce back up over 99, up to 99.8. But as I said, it's likely not going to linger around there. But obviously, as U.S. natural gas production falls, that's going to widen the deficit gap each winter and shrink the surplus margin during the warmer months in the other half of the year. 
Now, somewhat similar natural gas uh, issues are occurring in some parts of Europe. In Poland, for example, they have just in uh, the last 15 years or so begun developing a hunger for natural gas as they have been switching over a lot of homes and buildings, heating systems to uh, natural gas furnaces from, in most cases, not oil boilers or propane heaters, but uh, in most cases, a huge number of them actually used to be coal furnaces. So the Polish government has been trying to get as many of those switched over to gas as possible, away from coal. And on average, roughly a bit under 200,000 homes or buildings each year in Poland uh, get switched over to natural gas heating. And over in the UK, they are also having a natural gas problem. But the UK's natural gas worries are of a different sort. The UK already has natural gas demand, has a lot of natural gas heating. Some natural gas power plants, I believe, also... Their issue is uh, their ever-diminishing levels of natural gas storage inventories. As uh, many of their older, many decades old natural gas storage sites have uh, been aging away and getting shut down, the UK government has not really cared at all and uh, not replaced any of them. So their total storage capacity, their storage inventories have been shrinking and shrinking. Down under... 100 billion cubic feet, down to like 70, 60, 50. Now down to their maximum storage capacity is only 44 billion cubic feet. And one of these years, I believe it was 2018 in the winter, uh, you guys over in the UK cut it really close. You were constantly having to draw out of your storage inventories uh, to fill the deficit, and they got really low. Down into the single digits, 7 six down towards five before it started to turn around but i can only point things out that's the uk government's decision not mine obviously now moving on from the broad subject down into just the regular weekly numbers themselves u.s natural gas production actually had a bit of a rebound up from 97.2 up to 99.8 billion cubic feet per day whereas because of the early cold u.s natural gas consumption jumped up by seven from a bit over 80 up to 87.7 billion cubic feet per day, with the individual numbers within that, as mentioned, being heating demand up already at 16.4 billion cubic feet per day. Demand from natural gas-fired power plants in the U.S. Uh, hanging around its new usual average for this week that has just ended. It came in at an average of about 29.2. U.S. natural gas exports heading off on LNG tankers. Another inevitable add-on to the uh, coming deficit problems. Climbing back up towards the heights they were reaching around uh, the end of last year or so before this year hit and this year's situation started. This week, U.S. natural gas exports getting back up to just under 8, coming in at 7.9 billion cubic feet per day. Consumption by the pumping system of the natural gas pipelines themselves for its own uh, pumping system fuel to move all the natural gas around bumping up to 6.7, and industrial demand, aka natural gas uh, being used in some part to make petrochemicals or nat gas chemicals, primarily the uh, most common two types of plastic, polyethylene and polypropylene, as well as a huge chunk being used in the uh, nitrogen fixation process to extract nitrogen from the atmosphere. Industrial demand coming in at 21.7 billion cubic feet per day. U.S. natural gas storage inventories continue increasing for the last few weeks of the refill season now up to 3.93 trillion cubic feet in storage in comparison to normally at this time of year they would still be down at 3.6 and last year this time they were a little bit lower than that at 3.58 and the present european inventory numbers are uk natural gas inventories presently already being drawn down for this winter and as of the moment are around 39 billion cubic feet per day compared to their uh, maximum storage capability, as we already mentioned, is only about 44. Germany, whose natural gas consumption has also been rising, as uh, they've had to switch over to uh, natural gas-fired power plants in many places to try to replace the nuclear that they're shutting down. Germany, at least, uh, does have sizable storage inventories for a nation of its particular size with its maximum storage capability being 821 billion cubic feet. And their current numbers are uh, already on the decline as well, 
presently at 776 billion cubic feet in storage. Poland on the decline as well as the cold months are coming, presently at 124 billion cubic feet in storage, and their maximum capacity is 130. And for natural gas prices, as of the moment, they are a little bit above $2.90 per thousand cubic feet. Ending with the oil numbers as opposed to usual, U.S. oil production dropped further last week because the oil numbers are for the previous week, as much of the uh, U.S. Gulf of Mexico oil production was still shut down for a fair part of that week. So U.S. oil production for the past week was down at 9.9 .9 million barrels per day, while U.S. oil consumption dropped back down to 18.1 million barrels per day, with the individual product numbers within that being... U.S. gasoline consumption fell back a bit, down to 8.29 million barrels per day. U.S. diesel fuel consumption fell down towards the lower end of its normal range. Usually it hovers around 4 and uh, can go up to 4.5 or sometimes down to 3.5. Last week it dropped down to 3.59 million barrels per day. U.S. jet fuel consumption, which if not for 2020, would normally be at 1.6 to 2 million barrels per day, fell back down a little bit, down to 975,000. And U.S. propane consumption, as the early cold is setting in, as already mentioned thoroughly, is beginning to stay above 1 million barrels per day equivalent, this time coming in at 1.47. U.S. crude oil inventory has dropped a bit, down by 1 million barrels down now to a uh, total in storage of 488 million barrels versus the uh, 550 or so that U.S. inventories had gotten up to under the oversupply stage for those couple of months. And oil prices, as mentioned, still hovering right around $40 per barrel. All right, that's about it for this one. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. You can support if you want through PayPal, Patreon, just only if you actually can. And may God bless and protect you all. I will see you all around next time.